yes, and muscles of reload limb, they are divided into muscles of the side, muscles of the leg, and muscles of the foot. So first we will start with muscles of pelvic girdle. Uh, they are divided into two groups, internal and external muscles. So internal muscles, they originate from inside, from uh, cavities of greater and lesser pelvis. But after that, all of them, nearly all of them, leave pelvic cavities through different openings and they are inserted somewhere into uh, the femur. Yes, because all of them act onto the hip joint. Uh, external muscles of pelvis, they originate from outside and they also inserted to the femur. So when we talk about internal muscles of pelvis, we should know not only origin, insertion, and action of these muscles, but we also have to know the place, uh, the opening, through which this muscle leaves, pel leaves pelvic cavity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are four internal muscles of pelvis. Thank you, mm -hmm. You're welcome. Iliopsoas muscle, piriformis muscle, obturate internus muscle, and there is one more inconstant muscle that is psoas minor muscle. So we will start with iliopsoas muscle. Iliopsoas muscle, musculus iliopsoas, it has two heads, psoas major muscle and iliacus muscle. So first psoas major muscle, well, here we cannot see it uh, because here we can see um, lumbar plexus. So it originates from transverse processes of 12 thoracic and 4 lumbar vertebrae. And so it goes downward to the cavity of greater pelvis. And here in the cavity of greater pelvis, it joins iliacus muscle. Iliacus muscle, it originates from the whole iliac fossa. Iliac fossa of the um, hip bone. And so then, um, psoas major muscle joins iliacus muscle. They form together iliopsoas muscle. This iliopsoas muscle leaves pelvic cavity through the muscular space. What is muscular space? We'll talk about it later. So this is also iliopsoas muscle. It leaves pelvic cavity through the muscular space. And then iliopsoas muscle surrounds the sides, surrounds the femur. From anterior side, it moves medially. And it is inserted to the lesser trochanter of the femur. Let's just look into the femur. Action of this muscle is a flexion of the side in the hip joint and also lateral rotation of the side. Mm -hmm. That is the psoas muscle. The other muscle, this one, is musculus piriformis. Piriformis muscle, we also can see it here. This one is piriformis muscle. So it originates from anterior surface of sacrum. And it goes mid laterally, sorry, it goes laterally, it leaves pelvic cavity through the greater sciatic foramen and it is inserted to the greater trochanter of the femur. Greater trochanter of the femur. Mm, this is, that's it, uh, piriformis muscle and it is inserted to the greater trochanter of the femur. So the action of this muscle is also lateral rotation of the side in the hip joint. Uh, piriformis muscle divides greater sciatic foramen into two more for foramina. So we, uh, when we study joints, we were saying that um, greater sciatic foramen is formed by greater sciatic notch and also, what is this? Iliac tubricle. What is it? Iliac tubricle. No, it is sacrospinous ligament. Mm -hmm. Sacrospinous ligament. So greater sciatic notch oh. and sacrospinous ligament together they form greater sciatic foramen. So now, Piriformis muscle that lives through great sciatic foramen, mm -hmm. it divides uh, great sciatic foramen into two more foramina, supraperiform that is located above and intraperiform that is located below. Through both supra and intraperiform, здравствуйте, foramina. Водичку в ванну или? Да, дайте забавить, плиз. So, uh, through both supra and intrapiriform foramina, vessels and nerves leave pelvic cavity. So, that is piriformis muscle. The next, obturator internus muscle, musculus obturator in, obturatorius internus. That's it. So, it originates from uh, margins of obturator foramen and from the obturate, internal surface of obturator membrane. Then, it moves medially. It leaves pelvic cavity through less sciatic foramen. And it is inserted to the trochanteric fossa. 
here we can see that what this is yes let's escape the foramen what this is obturated internus so it goes and it is inserted to the trochanteric fossa that's it action of this muscle uh, also is um, a lateral rotation of the thigh and one more muscle uh, that is in constant. It is psoas minor muscle. Here we cannot see it. It originates from transverse process of the 12th thoracic vertebra and it moves downward and it is inserted to the iliacus fascia, fascia iliaca. And the action of this muscle is to tense uh, fascia of iliacus muscle. That's it. So these are internal muscles of pelvis. External muscles of pelvis include the following muscles. So first there are three gluteus muscles, gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, and gluteus minimus. And there are also gemellus superior and inferior muscle, and there is quadratus femoris muscle, and musculus tensor fascia lata. So we'll start first with uh, this gluteus maximus muscle, musculus gluteus maximus. It is a broad muscle. Uh, it originates from dorsal surface of the ilium, uh, starting from the posterior gluteal line, yes, and then bundles of this muscle, they converge, they move downward and laterally, and they are inserted to the gluteal tuberosity uh, of the femur. So if this muscle is well developed in humans due to the bipedalism that we stand on two legs because uh, this muscle helps to keep our body straight. Yes. So the action of this muscle is abduction of the side in the hip joint and also extension of the side. That is uh, gluteus maximus muscle. Then gluteus medius muscle, musculus gluteus medius. Uh, it is located under, it is covered by uh, gluteus maximus muscle and it originates from dorsal surface of ilium between uh, anterior and inferior gluteal lines. Yes, anterior and inferior gluteal lines, and then it moves downward and laterally, and it is inserted to the greater trochanter of the femur. Great trochanter of the femur. So the main action of this muscle is also abduction of the thigh, but also anterior bundles of this muscle. They cause medial rotation, pronation of the thigh, and posterior bundles cause lateral rotation, supination. Under the gluteus medius muscle, there is small gluteus minimus muscle. That's it. Here it is. This is gluteus minimus muscle. It also originates from dorsal surface of the ilium between anterior and posterior gluteal lines. And then it moves also downward and laterally, and it is also inserted to the greater trochanter of the femur. And action is the same. Abduction of the side and also medial and lateral rotation. So these are gluteus muscles. Here, when we start, talked, when we were talking about internal muscles of pelvis, we were saying that here there is obturator internus muscle. So above and below obturator internus muscle, there are two more muscles. They are gemellus superior and inferior. So gemellus superior muscle, musculus gemellus superior, originates from ischial spine, and it is inserted to the trochanteric fossa above the place of insertion of obturator internus muscle. Gemellus inferior muscle originates from ischial tuberosity, and it is also inserted to the trochanteric fossa below the place of insertion of obturator internus muscle, and both of these muscles cause lateral rotation of the thigh and the hip joint. <coughs> <clears throat> and below the <coughs> gemellus inferior muscle, there is quadratus femoris muscle, musculus quadratus femoris. It also originates from ischial tuberosity, and it is inserted to the greater trochanter of the femur, and it also causes lateral rotation of the side. Here there is one more muscle, a musculus tensor fascia lata, that's it. It originates from superior anterior iliac spine and from uh, lateral external lip of iliac crest, lateral one third, and then it moves downward and it is inserted to the uh, iliotibial tract. As this is iliotibial tract, it is like a thickening of fascia lata. Fascia lata is a proper fascia of the thigh that covers all the muscles of the thigh. Yes, and then iliotibial tract continues downward and it is inserted to the uh, lateral condyle of tibia. And so the action of this muscle is to tense fascia lata because due to its name, yes, musculus tensor fascia lata. Okay, so these were external muscles of pelvis. 
what should we know about the topography of this region? Uh, we studied in inguinal canal as a previous lesson, yes, and uh, we know that inferior wall of inguinal canal is formed by inguinal ligament, and which muscle forms inguinal ligament? Inguinal ligament is formed by the epimeristis of external mm -hmm. and oblique abdominis muscle. Yes, and so here below the inguinal ligament there are two spaces, uh, vas muscular space and vascular space. Uh, muscular space is located laterally, and vascular space is located medially. Can you see anything, Akash? No. no. Would you like to see? Yeah, then you will have to move. So many people say. I'm not sure they want to see. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Okay, so muscular space and vascular space. Uh, muscular space is located laterally, vascular space is located medially. And they are separated from each other by iliopectinal arch, arcus iliopectinus. Uh, that's it. It is connective tissue structure. It is named iliopectinal because it is between iliopsoas muscle. And here there is pectinal muscle that belongs to medial group of the thigh muscles. We'll study it later. Okay, and um, first muscular space. Muscular space is bounded um, anteriorly by inguinal ligament, medially by iliopectinal arch, laterally by superior anterior iliac spine, and posteriorly it is periosteum of ilium. Is this? No, yes, periosteum of ilium. And uh, this space is named muscular space, lacuna musculorum, because through it, iliopsoas muscle leaves pelvic cavity, as well as femoral nerve, mainly due to the iliopsoas muscle. It, it is named muscular space. Medially from it, there is vascular space, lacuna vasorum, here we can see it, uh, because through this uh, vascular space, vessels leave. Uh, femoral artery and femoral vein. Uh, vascular space is bounded again anteriorly or superiorly by inguinal ligament. Uh, then uh, laterally it will be iliopectinal arch. Again, we can see it here, yes. Medially it will be lacuna ligament. And posteriorly it will be pubic, uh, not pubic, pectinal ligament or periosteum of pubic bone. So this is femoral artery. The pectinal ligament are located between. Pectinal ligament is periosteum of pubic bone. Periosteum of the pubic yes. bone. Yes, yes. So uh, the most lateral position uh, of the vascular space is occupied by femoral artery. Then it goes femoral vein. And the most medial, here there is um, femoral ring. That is occupied by rosenmuller pirogov lymph node. So these lymph nodes, they are formed by uh, lymph, uh, lymphoid tissue. And uh, this tissue is like is loose, yes. And in case of increasing uh, of intraabdominal pressure, these lymph nodes can be uh, replaced, and through this opening, um, um, coils of intestines, for example, can leave to form femoral hernia. So in this case, femoral canal will be formed. About femoral canal, we will talk later. Okay. So muscular and vascular space. That's what you have to know about uh, topography of this region. Then muscles of the thigh. So when we studied muscles of upper limbs, uh, we were saying that in both upper arm and forearm, uh, muscles are divided into two groups, yes, anterior and posterior. Here, in the thigh and the leg, all the muscles are divided into three groups. For thigh, these groups are anterior, posterior, and medial group. And for the leg, they are anterior, posterior, and lateral. So first we will start with anterior muscles of the uh, thigh. That's it. Here there are only two muscles, sartorius muscle and quadriceps femoris muscle. So sartorius muscle, musculus sartorius, originates from superior anterior iliac spine, and then it goes medially and downward, and it is inserted to the tibial tuberosity. Tibial tuberosity. Action of this muscle is... Um, uh, what is the action of this muscle? Extension, yes. Yes, extension of the leg and the knee joint and lateral rotation. Lateral rotation. Sartorius muscle, oh sorry, quadriceps femoris muscle. Quadriceps femoris muscle. 
We have already uh, had biceps muscle. Yes, it means that it has two heads. Uh, triceps muscle, it has three heads. Quadriceps muscle has four heads. Yes, so yes, quadriceps femoris muscle has four heads. Uh, they are rectus femoris muscle, vastus medialis muscle, vastus lateralis muscle, and vastus intermedius muscle. Vastus intermedius muscle. So rectus femoris muscle first originates from uh, anterior inferior iliac spine. That's it. Then vastus medialis muscle originates from posterior medial surface of the femur and from medial lip of linear aspera. Uh, vastus lateralis muscle originates from posterior lateral surface of the femur and lateral lip of linear aspera, and vastus intermedius originates from anterior lateral and medial surfaces of the femur. And then, all of these four heads join together to form a common tendon, and then uh, this common tendon surrounds the patella, that's why patella is a sesamoid bone, yes, because it is within the tendon, and this tendon of quadriceps humerus muscle forms three ligaments of the knee joint. First, they are retinaculum, uh, patella, medial and lateral ligaments, and also patella ligament itself. And so, and then patella ligament is inserted to the tibial tuberosity. So, quadriceps femoris muscle uh, is the main extensor of the leg and the knee joint. Yes, and also rectus femoris muscle, as it originates from the hip bone, from superior, post, uh, sorry, what did I say, anterior inferior iliac spine, it also causes flexion of the leg and flexion of the side in the hip joint, yes? So only rectus femoris causes flexion of the side, and all they together form cause extension of the leg in the knee joint. Okay, so these were muscles of anterior group. Muscles of posterior group of the side, they are three. They are three. Uh, here we can see semi uh, tendinous muscle, semi membranous muscle, and also biceps femoris muscle. So uh, all of them start from ischial tuberosity. This is semi tendinous muscle, musculus mm -hmm. semi tendinosus. It's named semi tendinous because half of the muscle is presented by the tendon. Yes, this is semi tendinous muscle. Semi means half, tendinous means tendon. Yes, so it originates from ischial tuberosity and then it moves downward and medially, and it is also inserted to the tibial tuberosity. So the action of this muscle is uh, flexion of the leg and the knee joint. Semimembranous muscle is named also um, semimembranous because here we can see first it starts with the tendinous part, then small muscular belly, and then half of the muscle is formed by like broad tendon, like membrane. Yes, so the semimembranous muscle. It also originates from ischial fibrosity and it also moves downward and it is also inserted to the tibial fibrosity. And the action is the same, flexion of the leg and the knee joint. Uh, and also, uh, yes, and extension of the side. Both of them also cause extension of the side in the hip joint. And the third muscle, it is biceps femoris muscle, musculus biceps femoris. Biceps, yes, it means it has two heads, a long head and short head. A long head originates from ischial tuberosity, and short head originates from middle one third of the posterior surface of the femur, and then they join together, and they get inserted to the lateral condyle of tibia. And the action is the same, extension of the side and flexion of the leg. Uh, medial group of muscles is formed by five muscles, uh, gracilis, pectinus, uh, and three adductor muscles, adductor longus, adductor brevis, and adductor magnus muscles. So first, gracilis muscle, musculus gracilis. It originates from inferior pubic ramus and inferior margin of pubic symphysis, and then it moves downward, and it is inserted also to the tibial tuberosity, and the action of this muscle is abduction of the side. Adduction or uh -huh. abduction? Abduction. All this medial group, uh, uh, action of for all the medial group muscles is abduction of the side. And here we have to know that um, there are three muscles, yes? Um, one muscle from anterior group, that is sartorius, one muscle from medial group, it is gracilis, and one muscle from posterior group, it is semitendinous muscle, 
uh, all of them uh, get inserted to the tibial tuberosity and they form like structure that is named superficial goose food. Pesanserinus superficialis, mm -hmm. like duck, like food of the duck. Mm -hmm. Yes? So it is named um, Pesanserinus superficialis. And semimembranous muscle. Uh, before the insertion, it is also divided into three tendons and it forms deep goose foot, Pesan serinus profundus. So we have to know it, these two structures. Okay, so the next muscle is pectinous muscle, musculus pectinus. It is small muscle here, we can see it. It originates from pectin osseus pubis, yes, like the crest of the pubic bone, and then it goes to um, downward first, downward and medially, surrounds the side from the medial side, and it is inserted to the pectinal line of the uh, pectin line, ilium. of the femur. Pectinal line is present between the ilium now? In the ilium, it starts from the ilium, from pectin, yes, this. And pectinal line is also present in the femur. Uh, on the posterior surface of the femur, there is linear aspera, yes? Mm -hmm. This linear aspera consists of two lips, medial lip and lateral lip. Medial lip superiorly continues to gluteal tuberosity. That is a place of insertion of gluteus maximus muscle, yes? And lateral lip continues to the pectinal line. That is a place of uh, insertion for pectinous muscle. And the action is lateral rotation also of the side. And so three, and deduction definitely, and also medial rotation, lateral, sorry, lateral rotation, yes. Mm -hmm. And the ductal muscles, they are three. Adductor longus, I told you, adductor brevis, and the ductor magnus muscle. So adductor longus muscle originates from uh, superior pubic ramus, and it goes downward, and it is inserted to the middle um, one third, um, yes, middle one third of linear aspera. And the ductor brevis originates from inferior pubic ramus, and it is inserted to the proximal one third of linear aspera. And the ductor magnus originates from superior pubic ramus, inferior pubic ramus, and also pubic symphysis. Uh, yes, and then it moves downward, and it is inserted to middle and distal one third of linear aspera. So all of these three muscles cause adduction of the side. Adduction of the side. So, which topographical structures should we know here in the site, in the region of the site? First of all, uh, femoral triangle. Femoral triangle, that's it. So, femoral triangle is bounded laterally by sartorius muscle, then medially by adductor longus muscle, and superiorly by inguinal ligament. This femoral triangle is important because through it, femoral artery and femoral vein pass. No, and femoral nerve also, yes? And after they leave femoral triangle, they enter a ductal canal. So this is also here we can see femoral triangle first. And then uh, this femoral artery and femoral vein, they enter a ductal canal or Hunter's, ca Hunter's canal, yes. Uh, a ductal canal has three walls. Um, Lateral wall is formed by vastus medialis muscle. Medial wall is formed by adductor magnus muscle. Anterior wall is formed by uh, connective tissue plate that is stretched between vastus medialis and adductor magnus muscle. It is lamina vasta adductoria. Through the adductor, let's say, no, not like that. Uh, adductor canal has three openings. Superior opening, inferior opening, and anterior opening. Through the superior opening, into the adductor canal, three structures enter. Yes, that is um, femoral artery, femoral, yes, femoral artery, femoral vein, and saphenous nerve. No, saphenous nerve uh, is one of the branches of femoral nerve. Now we are not that much interested, but um, later we'll study it. Okay, then through the anterior opening, the saphenous nerve leaves femoral canal, or adductor canal. And femoral artery and femoral vein, they live through the inferior opening, they enter the popliteal fossa. So inferior opening, it is like an opening in the adductor magnus muscle, and uh, through it, femoral artery and femoral vein leave the adductor canal, and they enter popliteal fossa. Okay. My popliteal mm -hmm. fossa is present within the posterior surface of femur. Yes, uh, it's like posteriorly from the knee joint. We will study it later. Yes. Так, that was medial group of the side muscles. 
Okay, now muscles of the leg. Muscles of the leg are formed by uh, also there are three groups. There is anterior group, posterior group, and lateral group. So we will start with anterior group first. Anterior group. Anterior group of muscles is uh, presented only by three muscles. That is tibialis anterior muscle, musculus extensor uh, hallucis longus, and musculus extensor digitorum longus muscle. So here they are. Uh, first, tibialis anterior muscle originates from anterior surface of the tibia and anterior surface of the interosseous membrane of the leg. And then it moves downward and it passes under the extensor retinaculum. Extensor retinaculum we can see here. It is a ligament that is stretched between lateral and medial malleoli. Yes, and under this ligament, all the uh, tendons of all the three muscles pass. I mean, tibialis anterior, uh, musculus extensor, hallucis longus, and musculus extensor digitorum longus. And uh, this tibialis anterior muscle goes, it surrounds medial margin of the foot, and it is inserted to the plantar surface of the uh, first and second I guess you have to check, uh, metatarsal bones, yes? So the action of the muscle is mm, flat extension. Extension of the foot in the talocrural joint, and also it elevates medial margin of the foot. So uh, this elevation of medial margin of the foot, or aversion, it, uh, mm, this movement uh, occurs in the subtalar joint. Yes, subtalar joint. Okay, that is tibialis anterior. Mm -hmm. So the plantar flexion, uh, plantar flexion, uh, plantar flexion also occurs. No, it will be dorsal flexion. Dorsal flexion. Uh, plantar flexion will be caused by posterior group of muscles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Так, musculus extensor digitorum longus muscle originates from uh, also anterior surfaces of tibia and fibula and anterior surface of interosseous membrane. Then uh, this muscle moves downward uh, and passes under the extensor retinaculum and it is inserted to the distal phalanx of greater 2. And it causes extension of the foot and the talocrural joint and extension of the greater 2. Yes. And musculus extensor digitorum longus muscle originates from anterior surface of the fibula and anterior surface of interosseous membrane, and it passes also under the extensor retinaculum. And this muscle is divided into four tendons, and each of these four tendons is inserted to the distal phalanges of the tooth from the second to the fifth. So the action is extension of the foot in telecrural joint and extension of the tooth from the second to the fifth. Yes, that was um, anterior group of muscles. This one? Uh, yes, yes, this one. Okay, then lateral group, lateral group includes only two muscles, peroneus muscles, peroneus longus and brevis. Here they are, this one is longus, and under it there is a brevis muscle. This is brevis. Okay, so both of them originate uh, from the head of the fibula, and then they move downward, they pass under the peroneal retinaculum. Peroneal retinaculum is another ligament that is stretched between lateral malleolus and calcaneal tuberosity, and then um, both of them go downward, and they uh, surround a lateral margin of the foot, and peroneus longus muscle is inserted to the plantar surface of the second metatarsal bone, and peroneus brevis muscle is inserted to the plantar surface of the fourth metatarsal bone. So the action is um, flexion, plantar flexion of the foot, and also it elevates lateral margin of the foot, both of these muscles. Okay, and then, and then, posterior group of muscles. Here there are more muscles, that's why they are arranged into two layers, superficial and deep. Superficial layer of muscles is presented by triceps sura muscles, and also there is plus plantaris, yes, muscle, yes. No, da, gastrocnemius is included in the triceps sura, yes? Mm. Okay, so first we will start from triceps sura muscle. Musculus triceps sura. So uh, triceps means it has two heads, yes? Oh, sorry, three heads, mm -hmm. yes, three heads. So two heads belong to gastrocnemius muscle, this is gastrocnemius muscle, and uh, the third head, it is soleus muscle. So gastrocnemius muscle. 
musculus gastrocnemius. Uh, has medial and lateral heads, lateral and medial. Mm -hmm. So they originate from medial and lateral condyles of the femur. Yes. Soleus muscle is located under the gastrocnemius. That's it. It originates from solial line of tibia. On the posterior surface of the tibia, there is solial line. This is musculosolius. Muscle, muscle soleus. It is oblique line, yes, and that is the place of origin for soleus muscle. So then, um, all of these three heads join together and they form calcaneal tendon or Achilles tendon. Yes, this Achilles tendon is inserted to the calcaneal tuberosity. Achilles tendon is named so due to the, this Greek hero. Yes, Achilles. Do you know who is he? No. Mm. Ah, okay. Well, please read. In the next lesson, you will tell us who is this. So, um, and why it's named like this? By uh, his name. On his behalf. Who is this called? Huh? He was no, he is a Greek. He is a hero from Greek mythology. He was killed uh, by an arrow that got into this place. So, okay. Mm. So that's why he was famous. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the action of this triceps sura muscle is flexion of the foot in the telecrural joint, and also gastrocnemius muscle causes. Uh, flexion of the leg and the knee joint. Soleus muscle originates from tibia, so it does not act onto the knee joint. But gastrocnemius muscle acts onto the knee joint because it originates from the femur. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, between gastrocnemius and soleus muscle, uh, here there is one more small, very thin muscle that is plantaris muscle. It originates from lateral condyle of the femur, and so it moves downward. Uh, as a thin tendon, and also it joins Achilles tendon, and it is inserted to the calcaneal tuberosity. So the action is the same. Under it, there is a small muscle, popliteus muscle. Here it is. Here we can see it. It originates from lateral condyle of the femur, and it is inserted to the uh, posterior surface of the proximal end of the tibia, and its action is uh, flexion of the leg and the knee joint. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then deep layer. Deep layer of muscles is presented by three muscles. That is tibialis posterior muscle, then musculus flexor digitorum longus, and musculus flexor halucis longus. Tibialis posterior, yes, musculus flexor digitorum longus, this one, and musculus flexor halucis longus. Yes. Uh -huh. Halutus belong to the thumb of foot. To the grade two, yes. Yes. So again, tibialis posterior, and flexor digitorum longus, and flexor halutus longus. So these muscles originate from posterior surface of the tibia, and posterior surface of interosseous membrane, uh, and posterior surface of fibula also, and um, uh, then tibialis posterior, and all of them also pass under the flexor retinaculum. Flexor retinaculum is stretched between medial malleolus and calcaneal tuberosity. And so this tibialis posterior muscle uh, goes downward, passes under the flexor retinaculum, and it is inserted to the uh, second and third metatarsal bones. Musculus extensor digitorum longus also passes under the flexor retinaculum. It gets divided into four tendons, and it is inserted to the distal phalanges, plantar surfaces of distal phalanges of the tooth from the second to the fifth. Yes, and uh, extensor halucis longus uh, also passes under the flexor retinaculum, and it is inserted to the distal phalanx of the great tattoo. And from the name it's clear, yes, that extensor flexor, flexor, digitorum longus, it flexes the foot and it flexes the tooth, yes, from second to the fifth, and ex, uh, flexor halucis longus also flexes the foot and flexes the great tattoo. Okay, what should we know about the topography of this region? Here, first of all, at the boundary uh, between thigh and leg, there is popliteal fossa, fossa popliteal. Mm, it is rhomboid in shape, and so I told you that when femoral vessels leave a ductal canal, they enter popliteal fossa. Uh, also, here we can see nerve. 
and we'll study it later. And now we should know the structure of popliteal fossa. It is rhomboid in shape. It is um, its superimedial boundary is formed by semitendinous and semimembranous muscles. Superlateral boundary is formed by biceps femoris muscle. And inferiorly, these are lateral and medial heads of gastrocnemius muscle. Lateral and medial heads of gastrocnemius muscle. Then, um, cruropopletal canal. The canal is cruropopletus. It is located on the posterior surface of the tibia, between superficial and deep layers of muscles, of uh, posterior group of muscles. It, um, its walls are, so posterior wall is musculus soleus, anterior wall it is tibialis posterior muscle, uh, lateral wall, lateral wall. It is musculus flexor hallucis longus muscle and its medial wall is musculus flexor digitorum longus muscle. And through this canal here we can see posterior tibial artery and tibial nerve passes and the posterior tibial veins also pass. So that's it. Cruropopletal canal. Two more canals that you also have to know. Um, we actually discussed it at the lecture, yes, on Friday. Uh, here's the superior and inferior muscular perineal. Oh, by the way, uh, did you attend my lecture, Akash, on Friday? No. Why? You go there absent. Why? For the reason absent. Mm. You know, at my lecture there were only uh, eight students. Only eight students? Eight students, yes. On Friday? Yes. I don't remember. Don't remember. Yeah. So then you don't remember because you uh, didn't come. I mean online lecture. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, at 16 p.m. At, at uh, 4, 4.40. 4.40. Four mm -hmm. On which day? Uh, last Friday. Friday. There were two links on ah. DK. Okay. So, and, uh, and in the portfolio there was only one class for an IP. Ah, you had a lecture on six at six, yes? yes Did you attend it? Yes. Uh, yes, I think it was it was a lecture for eleven, twelve and thirteen group. Ah, yes, at yes. 440. Yes, yes. Mm. Ah, okay, it was we not for you. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, why you don't take the lecture at six ten? When my topic comes, I will. Topic was distribution. Topic was what? Topic was distribution between the. Yes, of course. And the yes, yes. We, mm, yes. We divided topics, of course. <clears throat> okay. Mm, yes. So you be, uh, then you didn't have this lecture yet about mm, yes. myology. Okay. <clears throat> so, so you be an inferior muscular perineal canal. Is superior first, superior muscular perineal canal is bounded medially by the head of fibula and laterally by perineus longus muscle. And in this canal, common perineal nerve passes. And inferior muscular perineal canal is between uh, tibialis posterior muscle and musculus uh, flexor digitorum longus muscle. And here, perineal artery passes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so muscles of the foot. Muscles of the foot. Uh, they are divided into dorsal and plantar groups. Dorsal and plantar groups. So, uh, first dorsal muscle, they are only two. There is musculus extensor digitorum brevis muscle and musculus extensor hallucis brevis muscle. Both of them originate from superior surface of calcaneus and talus, and then musculus extensor digitorum brevis muscle is divided into four tendons, and it is inserted to the middle phalanges of the tooth from the second to the fifth, and musculus extensor hallucis brevis uh, is inserted to the proximal phalanx of the greater tooth. And so this muscle causes extension of um, tooth, all the tooth, yes. Okay, and about um, plantar group, plantar muscles. Uh, plantar muscles are divided into three groups. There, are, uh, there is a medial group that um, includes muscles for the greater two, these are thinner muscles. There is lateral group that includes muscles for the um, fifth two, these are hypocinna muscles, and there is middle group. For thinner and hypocinna muscles, you just have to know name, 
uh, and action, uh, like origin and insertion is not required, yes? And for the middle group here, you have to know uh, origin, insertion, action, so everything, yes? Here there is musculus, flexor, digitorum brevis muscle, first of all, that's it, that uh, flex flexes tools from the second to the fifth, yes? And there are also lumbrical second muscles. Second to fifth? Yes, second to fifth. Ma'am, no, look at it in second to four or in... No, to the fifth also. Okay, there is also... Um, Lump, there are also lumbrical muscles, like in the hand, the same, yes? And there are plantar and dorsal interosseous muscles. Yes. So you will read about origin and insertion uh, yourself. And three muscles in the middle group. The first one is the uh, plantar interosseous dorsal. Plantar interosseous dorsal interosseous. Uh, there is also what? Um, lumbrical muscles. And musculus flexor digitorum brevis muscle. One more thing that I didn't tell you. A femoral canal, yes? Uh, so I told you that here in the vascular space there is femoral ring in normal cases and in case of the uh, hernia formation this femoral ring becomes deep femoral ring, yes? And femoral canal is formed. Um, here in the side uh, there, are, there is fascia lata. Yes, I have already told you, that covers all the muscles of the side. And this fascia lata is divided into two layers. There is superficial layer of fascia lata, that is named cribriform fascia, and there is deep layer. So, um, okay. And here, at the proximal part of the side, uh, greater saphenous vein, that we will study later, drains into femoral vein. No? Uh, that's it. That is this place. And there is a special opening in the cribriform fascia that is uh, named saphenous hiatus for the uh, drainage of the um, greater saphenous vein, saphenous hiatus. So in case of formation of femoral hernia, this saphenous hiatus becomes a uh, superficial femoral ring. Saphenous hiatus is bounded by falciform margin, and this falciform margin superiorly ends with superior horn and inferiorly ends with inferior horn, and laterally from it there is femoral vein. And femoral canal in this case, in, in case of formation of femoral hernia, uh, consists of three walls, um, anteromedial, posteromedial, and lateral wall. So anteromedial wall is formed by cribriform fascia, posteromedial wall is formed by deep layer fascia nata, and laterally it will be a femoral vein. Ma'am, can the vein also form the wall of the... Yes, wall, yes vein also forms the wall. Uh, any questions? Ma'am, you described in the foot there are two groups of muscles. Mm -hmm. There is dorsal and palmar surface. Plantar, yes. Plantar surface. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, but this should be the ventral surface. No, it's dorsal. Mm -hmm. No, why? It's dorsal. Ma'am, when we um, mm -hmm. take the foot like this, so it comes like this and uh, this should be the ventral surface. Mm, no, but I don't know why, but it is named dorsal. It is dorsal on the foot. It's like for the hands. This is dorsal surface, this is pal palma surface. Yes. yes, this is dorsal surface, it is plantar surface. Uh, it is reversed in the case of foot. Yes. Yes, it is dorsal surface. Metacarpal tubercle are seen on the uh, dorsal surface. So that's why we can distinguish between them. Which ubicles? Metaca on the anterior surface of the metacarpal, mm. you don't see the mm -hmm. two intersections are mm. We can distinguish from them. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, any other questions? No more questions. So then, 